Magandang araw po sa lahat, si Fiscal EJ po ito. I have another topic to discuss po, and this topic is phrased through this question. Can due process of law be invoked against private individuals and or public officials acting in their private capacity? But before answering that question, let us first discuss the basic concept of due process. Due process of law simply means that before a man can be deprived of his life, liberty, or property, he must be given an opportunity to defend himself. This has been the definition of due process as early as the 1920 case of Cornejo v. Gabriel. Now, this right to due process is embodied in Article 3, Section 1 of our 1987 Constitution, which states, No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Now, the term no person in relation to the phrase no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property simply means everyone, regardless of race, regardless of social or economic status, gender, gender preference, political or religious belief, is entitled to due process of law. Now, the term or the word deprived, as used in the said constitutional provision, means to take something away from, or to withhold something from. It also means to be denied something to which one is entitled. In other words, before our life, our liberty or freedom, and our property is taken away from us, we must be given the opportunity to defend ourselves and prove our case. There are actually two kinds of due process, procedural and substantive. Procedural due process refers to the procedures that the government must follow before it deprives a person of life, liberty, or property. It refers to the method or manner by which the law is enforced. On the other hand, Substantive due process inquires whether the government has sufficient justification for depriving a person of life, liberty, or property. It requires that the law itself, not merely the procedures by which the law would be enforced, is fair, reasonable, and just. Now, to better understand this legal jargon, let us go through some examples. These are examples of how procedural due process is applied. X accuses Y of cyber libel. Now, merely accusing Y does not make him guilty of the crime. X has to go through some process before Y can be convicted or held criminally liable. First, X has to file a complaint before the fiscal's office. Second, the fiscal must give Y the opportunity to submit his answer to the complaint. Third, if the fiscal finds probable cause, then he will file the criminal case or information in court. Fourth, the court then gives X the opportunity to prove the guilt of Y. The court will likewise give Y the same opportunity. And fifth, it is only after the court gives the parties the opportunity to be heard shall it render judgment either convicting or acquitting Y. Here, you can readily observe that there is a procedure that the government must follow before it can deprive Y of his liberty or freedom. Another example, X. An employee of a shoe company was caught in the act stealing several pairs of shoes. The company, aside from filing a criminal complaint for theft against X, also wants to dismiss him from employment because of grave misconduct or on the ground of grave misconduct. Can the company immediately dismiss X? The answer is no. The law, 
I am referring to the labor code requires the company to comply with the twin requirements of notice and hearing. First, the company must notify X of the charge against him. And second, the company must give him the opportunity to explain his side of the story. Then and only then can the employer dismiss X from employment. And this is true even if X was caught on CCTV camera stealing company property. Example of how substantive due process is applied. Suppose Congress amends the law on theft by imposing the penalty of death if the value of the property stolen is at least 5,000 pesos. Question, is that a sufficient justification for depriving a person of his life? The answer is... No. Another question. Is the law itself fair, reasonable, and just? The answer is no. The law, therefore, is violative of substantive due process because the punishment is greatly disproportional to the crime committed. Imagine, 5,000 pesos lang yung value ng property na kinuha mo or subject of the theft tapos yung penalty is death. This is a clear example of a law that is violative of substantive due process. Take note that there must be both procedural and substantive due process. Even if there is procedural due process but the law being enforced is violative of substantive due process, there would still be arbitrary government action despite the fact that proper formalities are followed. What do I mean by this? In the previous example, let us say X was duly charged, tried, and convicted for the crime of theft for stealing property worth 5,000 pesos, for which reason he was meted the penalty of death. There is still a violation of the due process clause for the law itself is unfair and reasonable and unjust. The next question to ask is, against whom? should the right to due process of law be invoked. The guarantee of due process of law is a constitutional safeguard against any arbitrariness on the part of the government, whether committed by the legislature, the executive, or the judiciary. Any government act that goes against justice or fair play is considered a violation of due process, and this is true whether the denial involves violation merely of the procedure prescribed by the law or affects the very validity of the law itself. So we can see here that due process of law can be invoked only against the government, whether the legislature or Congress, the executive or the judiciary. Question, can it be invoked against the acts of private individuals or against public officials acting in their private capacity? The answer is, no. The Bill of Rights, of which due process is a part of, is not meant to be invoked against acts of private individuals. It is true that the liberties guaranteed by our Constitution must always be subject to protection. But protection against whom? Protection against arbitrary government action. Further, the Bill of Rights governs the relationship between the individual and the state as represented by the government. Its concern is not the relation between individuals, between a private individual and other individuals, as ruled in the case of Kadahas versus People. Now, in the case of Bote versus SPCPI, where a party claimed that its rights to due process was allegedly violated by a municipal mayor, the Supreme Court said, The Bill of Rights was intended to preserve and guarantee the life, liberty, and property of persons against unwarranted intrusions of the state. In the absence of government interference, the liberties guaranteed by the Constitution cannot be invoked against the state or its agents. Stated differently, the Bill of Rights cannot be invoked against 
private individuals or in cases where there is no participation by the state either through its instrumentalities or persons acting on its behalf. So, klarong-klaro na ang right to due process natin can be invoked only against the government or against public officials acting in their official capacity and not against private individuals. In that same case, the Supreme Court further said, There is no dispute that Bote, at the time of the incident, was a municipal mayor. However, the records are bereft of any indication that during the incident, he was acting as such, or on behalf of, or upon the authority of the state. Mayor Bote was acting as a private individual, or in his personal capacity, and the incident arose from a private dispute between Bote and SPCPI involving a private property. So, we can see here that the dispute between Mayor Bote and a private entity was purely a private one involving a private property. Walang kinalaman po sa functions niya as a municipal mayor. The private character of Mayor Bote's acts makes the Bill of Rights inapplicable. Thus, while SPCPI can continue to insist that Bote violated its rights through his alleged illegal and oppressive acts, SPCPI cannot invoke Section 1, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution to sustain an administrative case against Bote. SPCPI may find redress through a civil or criminal suit, but not through an administrative action for, let's say, culpable violation of the Constitution. In the earlier case of Atienza v. Commission on Elections, the Supreme Court declared, The Bill of Rights, which guarantees against the taking of life, property, or liberty without due process under Section 1, is generally a limitation on the state's powers in relation to the rights of its citizens. The right to due process is meant to protect citizens against arbitrary government action, but not from acts committed by private individuals or entities. In the latter case, the specific statutes that provide reliefs from such private acts apply. The right to due process guards against unwarranted encroachment by the state into the fundamental rights of its citizens and cannot be invoked in private controversies involving private parties. So, klaro, klaro na po na hindi ito pwedeng ma-invoke against private controversies involving private parties and even against public officials acting in their personal capacities. Now, if due process of law cannot be invoked against the acts of private individuals or against public officials acting in their private capacity, then what is the remedy of the aggrieved party? The aggrieved party can always file the appropriate civil or criminal case grounded on a specific violation of law. Examples X, a full-time vlogger, lambasted, insulted, and ridiculed Y in his YouTube channel without giving the latter the opportunity to rebut. Question, can Y claim that his right to due process was violated? The answer is, no. Why? Because X is not the government. He is also not a public official. What Y can do is file a criminal complaint for cyber libel against X for defaming him online or file a civil case for damages under Article 26, as the case may be. Here is another example. Congressman X, in his private funded radio program entitled Isubong Mokai X, berated a chief of police for not taking action on a complaint for rape filed by Maria against a police officer who is under the said police chief's supervision. The latter felt utterly humiliated and insulted by the actions of the congressman. He now claims that his right to due process has been violated because Maria should have filed a complaint before the NAPOLCOM instead of asking the help of Congressman X. Question, is the chief of police correct? 
What do you think is the answer? The answer is obvious. The answer is no. Congressman X, while a public official, was acting in his private capacity. The right to due process, to reiterate, can only be invoked against the government or against a public official acting in his official capacity. His recourse against Congressman X is to file either a criminal case for libel or slander, as the case may be, and not because his right to due process has been violated.